choke all the way on and let's see what she does. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back in Jitchikanik. I hope everybody's having a great week. It is a nasty one here in Arkansas. It has been raining, I think, for the last three days, pouring. And we went from having a week straight of single digit lows to two weeks that now we're going to have of it pouring rain. So what do we do when it's nasty, rainy, cold during January here in Arkansas? We get ready for the spring. Cause when we shut down the shop, we had a ton of equipment we brought home with us to repair so we could sell it this spring. And it's sort of crazy cause we'll sit on it all of January, all of February and about half of March. And as soon as that sun pops out, we go from not having any customers, nobody buying any used equipment to selling everything in pretty much a week. So the one I decided to fix today for y'all, I'm really excited about, let me show you. But before I head inside, just in case y'all have not been a subscriber or been watching my videos very long, this is a 40 foot tarp full of two cycles underneath. I mean, it's full. About three feet high, you know, good 30 feet long of two cycle equipment that is either good for parts or to fix. And back here behind the shop, it just keeps going on and on. I have everything stuck back here so nobody thinks I'm some nasty hoarder, but all this stuff is going to be gone through in the next couple months. Got a pile walk behind mowers here. Everything's got potential. It's either got really good parts on it or just needs to be repaired. So one thing I'm not going to run out of is work. And even though I'm not going to have the same amount of customers that I had when I had my storefront because I don't have my new storefront open yet, I think I'm going to make a pretty good penny off all this used equipment this spring. Now y'all remember like 30 years ago when you can buy a mower and it was like made to last a little longer than a few seasons? We'll check this out. In the shop today, I have a Craftsman 42 inch cut. Now I know you're thinking, it's a Craftsman. Can't be that good. But this thing is 30 years old, okay? That's when, I mean, we've got metal frame here. We got a metal hood. We've got this beautiful engine sitting on it, okay? Gas tank's in great shape. There's no cracks in it. Deck is in great shape. The tires look good. This mower is in such good shape. Now, you go to try to find the year and we're gonna look at the uh, battery here. The battery is from 2009, okay? And it still looks almost brand new. <laughs> I mean, the battery's no good anymore, but still, it looks almost brand new. The seat on this thing, look, it still looks like if I shine this up, it's not coming apart anywhere. It's still perfect. But if you look at the code date here, let's see if I can get you in there. This is, 95, okay? The first two numbers on a Briggs tells you what year it is. This is a 95, guys. I mean, really? This was definitely garage kept. And for the cheapest mowers going today for at least $25, $2,600, I could at least get five to 600 bucks out of this. Now, why is it in my possession? How do I get a mower like this for free. Our shop stayed busy from the beginning of March all the way until November. We were usually at least three weeks out on rider repairs. So we had a firm rule. If anything was over 15 years old, we didn't work on it. Although it might not have much wrong with it, the fact is you can fix one thing and the next thing break. And it happened every time we made an attempt. It would be a friend or somebody we felt bad for. We're like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and just change the spindles out on it or we'll do some engine work. Next thing you know, the transmission would go out or the steering would go out. It was always something. So we just didn't do it. So when this mower came in, it was a friend of ours and they said they had it given to them. They had no backstory on it, didn't have any idea what could be wrong with it. And we pretty much just told him, we're sorry, we're too busy. There's no way we can get around to doing it. But since it was given to him, he really didn't think of it as a loss. He just went ahead and gave it to us. So times like this, when we're slow, I don't mind going through all these things, checking the transmission, checking the drive, checking the engine, checking the steering. I have time to go over it now and 
make some money off of it. But the majority of the time a repair like this and going through everything is going to cost the customer two to $300. And these mowers really only sell for five to six. So it just really wasn't worth it to us to put that much money into a customer's mower knowing that even if they were trying to sell it, they're gonna make a huge gamble investing all this money into something that who knows, might never run. So the first thing I do when I'm working on something this old is give it a good once over. Went and checked the deck and the spindle on the other side's fine, but the blade is a little loose on this one. So either the star's blown out on the bottom of it or something, I'll, I'll be able to find that out later, but it's not a big deal to me because I have shafts or I have whole spindles. The drag links look fine. The wiring looks perfect. I mean, I gotta get you a light so y'all can see in there, but it looks great. The gas tank, I don't think it's gonna be leaking. It looked like it was kept indoors, so that's gonna be fine. I can see here that somebody did a little job on the fuel line assembly. Um, that's gonna need to be replaced. I'm sure we're gonna have to do some carburetor work. Whenever I checked the oil, it was rank. I mean, this uh, oil is full of stinky gasoline. So what that means is the gas that was in the tank had gone through the carburetor and because the needle wasn't shutting off, either the tip got hard or something like that, and it went straight into the crankcase. So I'm gonna empty that out and start from there. Now, when you're working on a unit that is this old, you always wanna start with the engine and see if you can get it to run because the engine is the most important part of the machine. If I can get it running and the rest of the mower is still to boot, it's not really a big deal because I can put this engine on another frame. So any effort I put into it is still gonna work out for me. So the first thing I wanna do is remove the hood and get it out of the way so I can do this engine work. I'm just going to unplug this headlight wire here and it's just on two hinges. They come off really easy. Well, now that I notice, for some reason, the entire starter gear and clip assembly is missing. So I wonder what's up with that. So let's drain the oil and see what's in there. Yeah, that running out of it, that is straight gas. We're on an Alex's project for the day. Checking clearances. Yay. Now, depending on what comes out while you're draining the oil will determine on whether you need to flush your tank or not. Now, since this crankcase was full of gasoline already and it's pouring out like a sieve, I'm probably just gonna tilt it up on its side, get it all out of there, and it'll be fine to put some more oil in it. If it was, you know, real thick or I saw anything, you know, troublesome, I would go ahead, close it back up, throw some gasoline down in it, swish it around a little bit and flush it out that way. Now I'm just going to throw a jack under one side. That way I can tilt it towards the oil drain. But if you don't have a jack and you do have an air compressor, you can just take the air out of one of your tires. That way it all leans that way and then air your tire back up. You do not have to worry about the little remnants of gasoline in there. I know a lot of people freak out, but it's not going to do. All right, so I got a battery over here charging because I have no faith that the battery that's in this thing is going to run. But the next thing I need to do is figure out this starter situation. Before I put the top on it, I wanna make sure that it's gonna turn it all because this is the original starter. This thing is 29 years old. It actually has a code date on it, just like the uh, code up here that gives us the year model. It says 95, which I have not seen that in a very long time. They do not put that on the new one, so. Let's see if this thing turns over so we can uh, get it fixed up. Uh, I don't know, it's got potential. We might have to lube it up. All right, so I've got the starter off here and the top piece has a little bit of melting and wear right here. So I'm gonna probably replace this whole thing. When I twist it, it, it actually feels smooth and it's making that slight noise. Now you saw that it turned with a lot of strength. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a new top assembly on this, Bendix assembly, and roll with it. If I feel I need to, I've got plenty of engines with good starters out there I can replace. I did finally get all my Briggs parts in order. For all of you that have been following along on my shop mess in here, I finally got it organized a little bit. So I went with these shelves from Sam's because they roll. And right now with everything being so fluid and us not sure where everything's gonna stay, I needed something I can move easily. So I went ahead with them, even though they do not have as many shelves as I would like. I, would, I don't need them really being this deep, but you know, whatever you can get to make work at the time. But I did actually get my Briggs stuff all in back in numerical order. Um, some of the really old Briggs stuff is sitting on top of each other. Other than that, everything's single file. But 
I have an entire box here of the mixed tops and parts and, and gears. So I know I got something in here that'll work. Now I do have an entire brand new starter Bendix kit to put on it. I, I really, if I had a thrust washer, these are all just gears. I have gears. I have the um, little plate that goes on top. I have the clip. I would just put the pieces back on here, but since I don't have a washer, I'm going to have to open up the kit anyway. So I might as well use it, even though I'm, I'm going to bet this plastic is made so much better 30 years ago than what I'm fixing to put on it. But hey, it is what it is. All right. So I got the shaft sanded just a little bit. I'm going to throw just a little bit of this fluid film on it. I love this lubricant. This is a little sample I got from uh, the equipment expo in Kentucky. I'm just going to spray a little bit on there. It really doesn't need it because the shaft spins with the Bendix, but instead of, you know, it spinning on it. And these aren't really hard to put on at all. So whatever you, you're going to put your base, the next part is going to be your gear. Now the gear has a side that has uh, the tops of the gears all curve a little bit. The other side is completely flat. So you're going to want the curved side to go up because that's what goes into your flywheel gear. So we'll just put that on. Next, we've got our washer. And we've got our thrust washer. Our spring. The spring goes on top because it pushes the gear back down. Okay. And then... This little cap goes over it, and then there's an indention all the way around where this clip goes on. Now, if you do not have the specially tool to put this clip on, you are <laughs> going to have a heck of a time putting it back together. But what you do, you just set that clip right on top of that. And this is a Briggs & Stratton specially tool specifically designed just to put these clips back on. Now, it looks like there's a part number 19435 on it. I don't know if I can show you that. One, nine, four, three, five. I, I think that's what it says. You know, Maz don't work so good anymore, but that is the tool. So we're just going to hold it down like that. Now, don't hold your fingers. Whenever you do it, don't hold your fingers on this part that, ex you know, c comes apart because you will pinch yourself. All right. <laughs> so we're just going to stick it right there. We're going to hold it towards the top. Grab you a mallet. Yep. Sideways on it. Just like that. And we got our clip in. Perfect every time. And everything works great. All right, so now that I got the starter back together, I'm going to put it back on. I'm going to throw some oil in it. I'm going to remove the spark plug and make sure that the cylinder itself is not full of gasoline since we know that it went through the carburetor and into the crankcase. Now, quick little note, when you're putting your starter back on, there's a little bracket that you'll be putting on. Um, you'll, you'll notice it when you take it off, but just remember to put it back in the right place whenever you put it um, back together because it actually holds your stator wires down to where you don't pinch the wires behind your starter and they're not able to fly up into your starter gear and destroy your stator wires while it's running. It's flooded. Now, depending on what size engine you have determines how much oil you're going to put in it. Now, these old Briggs single cylinders usually took about 48 ounces, and Briggs sells a bottle that's specifically 48 ounces for these mowers. So I took the air filter off so I can spray some cleaner in there while we try to start it, but the pre-filter doesn't look that bad, but it's just falling apart. That's how long this thing said <laughs> it's turning to dust, but the air filter actually looks perfect so whoever had this thing took really good care of it and if you keep seeing me take clothes off and put them back on in this video it's because every time we open the door up i get cold <laughs> She's got potential. All right, so that's pretty exciting. We know this thing has tons of potential. It sounds good on the startup and the, the starter works. So, you know, bringing a 30-year-old starter back to life is pretty sweet. 
The next step is I'm going to go through the carburetor because even though at this point you really just want to throw some gas in it and go and it probably would run, it's going to continue to leak that gas through the carburetor into the cylinder and, and we don't want to end up changing our oil again, so I'm going to fix it. All right, to get this carburetor assembly off, I am going to cut this fuel line because I'm replacing all this and putting a new fuel filter in. I've already unhooked my fuel shutoff solenoid wires. I've got two bolts um, from this intake right here that I'm going to remove, and those are three eighths. And then I've got this bracket that sort of like stabilizes the whole thing, comes down to here, and I'm going to want to remove that bolt with a 5 16. Twist it. Like this. Gotcha. Spring. Oh, grab the other one. Oh, wrong one. Twist it like this. Yeah. Like, get our throttle lever off. And spring gently, not to stretch it out. Just leave that in place. And we got it off. And from the smell of it, this one's gonna be fun. Well, this thing is scary inside. I don't think I've ever seen one that wasn't as much rusted as it is just pure varnish. I mean, <laughs> this is gross. The fuel shutoff solenoid is completely locked up. I don't know if that's salvageable. And check that float out. I mean, everything's stained. It's so varnished so bad. I, I can't get the float pin out. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take uh, this intake off and the air filter base and soak this whole dang thing and see if I can salvage it. So guys, this is the point where I start questioning this carburetor's existence. Um, I let it soak in some gasoline for a while because the, the float pin was stuck, the needle was stuck in it. Everything is just really gooked up. And uh, I have the parts to put in it if I can get it clean. I've got a brand new float. I got a brand new needle. I got a brand new bowl gasket. There's really not much to it. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get all this varnish out. After that soak, it barely did anything. I've got my ultrasonic cleaner going right now. Hopefully once it heats up, I'm gonna let it sit in that for a while and see if that breaks any of this up. But right now, the way these butterflies are going, I mean, they're, pretty stuck. I mean, this one, if you let it go, it slowly goes back. This one is all I can do with all my finger strength to actually turn it. It's stuck. So it's going to be a toughie to clean. Now I do have a brand new carburetor, but this thing is $129.99 and I really don't want to put that on this mower if I don't have to. All right, guys. So after letting it soak in the ultrasonic cleaner, it did help a little bit. The throttle is much freer than it was before. The choke is still got varnish oozing out of the bottom of it. So whenever you let it go, it slowly goes back to where it needs to. I cannot get the emulsion tube out of this thing. I can probably remove the jet and try to give it some cleaning that way. Um, the uh, fuel inlet needle hole, it's clear. It doesn't have any varnish in it, so it's good. It's just gonna take some work. I mean, this carburetor is looking really good. And if I was working at the shop, I'd probably just go ahead and throw a carburetor on it. But I do not wanna put $100 into this machine if I don't have to. So I'm gonna keep trying to clean this one. Yeah, that is after soaking. You can see all that varnish oozing out of them holes. So let me see if I can show you the emulsion tube. It is just stuck like Chuck. And I'm just going to start destroying it if I keep trying any harder. Well, the bowl didn't come as clean as I would like, like at all. Let's see if we can spray it some. Well... It's coming out, but uh, I think I'm just gonna get the wire brush and make this quick. Much better. 
Oh, now I've been cleaning away on this thing, but I had to stop for a second because I completely forgot about the fuel shutoff solenoid that I still had soaking in my gasoline bucket. This thing was stuck like Chuck, would not move up and down. So I've been working on it for about 15 minutes. I use welding tip cleaners to uh, poke things. <laughs> I highly recommend getting some because I use them for everything when it comes to cleaning. So get your smallest one in there and start poking around if it won't move up and down. Because I don't know, well, I better explain what a backfire preventer is. These are on the bottom of a, a lot of carburetors, and what they do, it, it pops up anytime you turn the key off, and it shuts the fuel off to help it from not backfiring. So when something sits like this for a long time, they get stuck in the, uh, in the on position to where they're not going to let any gas come through. So the only way to clean it is to go around this little tip with something really small and pokey until you break up all that varnish again. Well, I'm continuously spraying it with carburetor cleaner and clean and poking at it, cleaning, spraying it with carburetor cleaner and poking at it until finally you get your pliers and you'll grab it and you'll try to twist it. And once you're able to freely twist it around, then you can start banging all that nasty stuff out. So spray some down in there and let me show you what it looks like when it comes out. It's a lot of nasty stuff. That's what I'm going to do over and over again. I'm going to spray it with carburetor cleaner and I'm going to keep pounding it until I get all of that rust and gook out. You can still see it on the tip there. Let me spray it again and keep pounding. Now, before you put this back on your carburetor, you're going to want to check out that it's even working because you don't want to put it all back together and realize, oh, it's not working and have to take it all back apart. So it's super simple. All you've got to do is plug it back in and it's in the off position right now when it when it, the little nipples all the way out and you're going just going to turn your key and see it pop down like that and then it pop back up pop down pop back up this one's working now I'm getting my carburetor all cleaned up and I'm putting it back together, but I wanted to stop and tell you something because this is a very common problem that we see all the time. Now, if you've got a Briggs & Stratton, most the majority of these have the Walbro or the Niki. And we see this way more in the Niki carburetors. I don't know if it's because of an age thing, like if they started using a different material because the choke levers really look the same, whether it's the Walbro or the Niki, I think they interchange, but what you'll find is the choke lever will start sticking. And these things, I don't know, I think they're like $17. I mean, for this, this piece of plastic that <laughs> it's ridiculous. So what you need to do, if you find that it's sticking, you can take it out, make sure it's clean, and you can just sand the bottom where it fits into the carburetor, pop it back in, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and put this back in here and see how it feels now. Oh yeah that's the way it's supposed to do. Just like that, see that action? Oh yeah. All right, well, uh, I don't have to put the air filter assembly back on to see if it'll start. I think I'm ready to throw some fuel in it and see if it fires up. All right, before we start her up, now that we got the carburetor put back on, you do wanna make sure that your choke lever is working and your throttle control. So I'm just going to go down here. 
and that works and then we're going to choke it and yeah our flap is closing all the way so that's good if it's not closing all the way you will have to adjust your throttle control all right i got it connected to my booster since i still don't have a good battery hooked up i'm putting the choke all the way on and let's see what she does So that is to be expected. I mean, this thing sat for a very long time. Everything needed to be lubed again. The valves might need to be adjusted. I went ahead and started it again and kept messing with the throttle and it ended up even and out. Let's listen to it now. Alrighty, put the choke on, booster's ready. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. I mean, this thing is 30 years old and it runs like a beast. If it keeps doing that little funky, you know, surging, I am going to have to do lash the valves uh, and see if that might be the issue. I did just notice that there's a missing bolt in the overhead valve cover, so I don't know what that's about. But yeah, it runs pretty dang good. I'm going to make this just part one and I'm going to make a part two on doing the whole deck thing because I know something's wrong with it. I'm not sure if it's just loose or if it needs a spindle. We'll check into that, but I am super excited. So guys, thanks again for tuning back into Chicanic. If you find yourself coming back over and over again to my videos, please think about hitting that subscribe button. It helps out the algorithm to make my videos shown to more people to help them save time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me on Instagram at TheRealChicanic or find me at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.